Okay, Eddie. So, um, yeah. So what I was saying was we're going to use this as a Germantown education podcast where people can just listen to this material whenever they like, and hopefully the material will be uplifting and encouraging and right. helpful. Right. So especially considering that we're, we are officially, you know, most everyone is coming back from the pandemic. Right. And we still have about, actually, from what we can calculate, 100 people online at this moment who are still oh. watching online. And some of that is just they're out of town, so they're watching online. Yeah. But we still got about 100 people, and so this is just something to offer them and for really anyone, just saying, hey, here's some helpful tips mm-hmm. on what to do with your faith coming out of the pandemic. Yeah, okay. You know, so and then I'll do another one with one of the ministers uh-huh. in a couple of months, and it'll be a four-part series uh-huh. you know, about something else. Uh, and so on and so forth. Just offer something every now and then for people to listen to, and they can listen to it whenever they want. Doesn't matter. Yeah. And, uh, well, that sounds good. Yeah. But just in, but really, we've got some great people here at Germantown who it would be a great resource to use. You know, uh-huh. and you're one of them. Oh, yeah. So I thought, <laughs> let's use these resources. Yeah. You know, let's do that. So well, I'm glad to help out. Yeah. No, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. So we're going to, like I said, we're going to do the video, and the video will be raw. I'm not going to edit it because it's really a hassle. And like I said, it's much easier to edit the audio yeah, okay. audio, rather than video because you got to splice and put things here and put things there. Yeah, It's a mess. So I'm not going to worry about that. So, um, yes, so if you mess up, just hold up your finger or just – Long pause, and then I'll wait, and we you just go back a little bit. Okay. I don't know, I don't know how much you know, so yeah. Um, just go back a little bit, start over just a little bit. Okay. And that way I can edit it. Right. You know, and just put it together. If you want to think about something, feel free to take as long as you want. I'll see the long pause and I'll cut it out. Okay. No big deal. Uh, I'll probably do that because sometimes I'll start a question and then I'll think, no, that's not a good question. <laughs> And then I'll think about it. And then I'll ask a better question. So uh-huh. totally fine. Not a big deal. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the goal is to be about 20 minutes Okay. for the podcast. So that's pretty good. But hopefully we'll go over that. Mm. And then I'll edit. Yeah. And we'll get down to 20 minutes. Okay. All right. So for some reason, I have a feeling we will go over. You do? For some reason. <laughs> I don't know, Eddie. It's just how I feel. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to start recording and let it equalize. Well, I thought you already were recording. I'm recording the video. Oh, now okay. I'm going to do the audio. Oh, okay. So, okay. Audio is recording. I don't have a name for our series. Okay. So if you think of something good, let me know. I just got a message. So that reminds me, if you have your phone, uh, put it on silent, please. Yeah, I better do that. Okay. Okay. Leave that on the ground. <laughs> Okay, and if we need to restart the uh, re- restart this, that's totally fine. Yeah. In the intro and things like that. Okay. I plan to record an introduction. Okay, uh, you know, then just put that on the beginning of every one, uh-huh. and so we don't have to reintroduce ourselves each time. But for this first one, though, yeah. I would like to just get a feel for things and ask you some just personal questions. You know, Eddie, who are you? Yeah, you know. What is your purpose in life? Yeah. My, my purpose <laughs> yeah. in life? Yeah. I'm beginning yeah. to wonder that myself. Explain. <laughs> explain. And then tell us what the purpose uh, of life is oh, you know, no, in man. general. Yeah. Well, I, got, I feel like I got one, so. Yeah, that's good. That's good. <laughs> okay, so we'll start off with a long pause, and then we'll get going. Hello and welcome, everyone. My name is Lucas Sudreth. I am the young adult minister here at the Germantown Church of Christ, and you are listening to our first ever Germantown Education podcast series. So very excited about this. I want to thank you for joining us and uh, being a part of this. You know, this, this is a great thing, or we hope it's going to be a good thing, and we hope that you'll continue to listen in. 
because today I am joined by my good friend and co-worker, Brother Eddie Lewis. Hello, Eddie. How you doing? Good to see you. Good. good. Yeah, it is, it is good to see you. It is good to see you, because right now, as we are recording, we're still getting out of the pandemic, or I feel like we're mostly out, but hey, there's still some people who are not back yet, yes. you know, in person and getting out and doing stuff, so it really is good to see you, Eddie, yeah. and uh, I appreciate you being here with us. And I'm glad to come. Yeah, yeah. Well, Eddie, I wanted you to do this podcast with me because you have a lot of experience. You have, um, especially here at the Germantown Church of Christ, right? because you worked here, right? Do you want to talk a little bit about that? What, what's your experience well, here with Germantown? Well, I've been a member here for 21 years. 21, all right. And uh, into the 22nd, mm-hmm. but I was on staff for 13 years here. That's great. And then I retired about seven, seven years ago, eight years ago and begin the mission work that I'm doing right now uh, to North Mississippi. Uh, here the last year, I've also got into working with the Christian Student Center at Mississippi Delta Community College. And uh, I was pleased to find out here just the other day, uh, about a, well, just a few days ago, uh, I've been approved to teach a Bible class on the campus of Mississippi Delta Community College. That's great. Yeah, it's going to be Jesus and the Gospels. The state approved it, so wow. uh, they do have some guidelines, but uh, sure. this will be the first time they've had a Bible class on the campus. It will wow. be in person, you know, so we really feel like it will help with the student center work. But now here at Germantown, for 13 years, I was the uh, education uh, involvement associate type minister. No, man, and, so you uh, had three hats. Uh, well, yeah, 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 that's exactly <laughs> right. And yeah. then when I left, they hired two guys to take my place. Yeah, so that says something about what they thought. They didn't <laughs> yeah. think anyone could replace you. Well, I don't know about that, guys but to two, two guys, you know, right. But mm-hmm. anyway, I've been, uh, enjoyed my time here. That's we good. have a really great eldership. You we know? do. They uh, really spiritual men and really interested in yeah. the work, and uh, we, we just really enjoyed doing what we did here so many years. Got a lot of good friends. One, yeah. of the, one of the things I did as an associate was to go around and visit everybody. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Uh, just about everybody in the congregation, I've been in their house at least yeah. once. You know, yeah. so. <laughs> wow. That, is that was good. accomplishment, you know. Yeah. Felt like. Yeah. Well, everyone loves you, Eddie, and you're still doing great work. You always have. Well, I appreciate yeah. that. So I thought, hey, let's get Eddie on here. <laughs> Give us some of that sage wisdom. There we go. So, yeah. Anyways, okay. So the purpose of this podcast, Eddie, is just to, like I said, provide a way for us to, you know, give another resource to those who are coming out of this pandemic, okay? Okay. And, and, and as we continue on with future podcasts, you know, and maybe we use other people in, in the distant future, we'll, we'll change it. But for this six-part series that we're going to do, you and me, I just want to do steps we can take to rebuild and to strengthen our faith. Because during this pandemic, I really do think that a lot of us have struggled. I would agree. I really do think so. And I know many have felt disconnected with their church family, and they're only just now getting back. I mean, it's been a year and a half, Eddie. Yeah. A year and a half. That's that's a long time to, to be disconnected. Right. Did you ever feel that kind of sense of disconnection with your church family or just maybe spiritually felt this little disconnect maybe? I, I think all of us did, myself. Yeah. I, I know I felt that my, myself uh, uh, for at least a couple of months. I didn't even go to church anywhere. It yeah. was all podcast and, mm-hmm. and viewing and things yeah. of that Zoom nature. And, yeah, yeah, Zoom and all online. that. Right, even... Uh, even at the student center, we had a Zoom class. We couldn't mm-hmm. have them in the uh, facility, you know. Yeah. But uh, uh, I really, it, that was really troubling to me because I, I like to uh, talk to people and shake hands and touch people and things of that nature. And uh, yeah. when you're not able to do that, that, that is very disheartening. Uh, yeah. But after a couple of months, then, then churches started to, uh, meeting on a limited basis, and so right. I was able to get back out. And uh, after that, it wasn't, uh, 
we were just down for about two months, but then after mm-hmm. that, I started going back and visiting with the churches and That's preaching great. places, and so. Yeah, in Mississippi, yeah. we never really closed down at all, did we? Well, you there know, were we some were... churches that didn't, did not That's close true. at That's all. That's true. Yeah. Man, and a lot yeah. of places didn't close down. We, people were still hugging and kissing, <laughs> doing all sorts of stuff in Mississippi. That's so, exactly right. I like to think we have a natural immunity, you and I, living in Mississippi. <laughs> uh, just a natural yeah. immunity that just comes from being in Mississippi. Yeah. You know? All these other states really struggled, and yeah, maybe it was because they stopped hugging and kissing, you know. Yeah. And just, their immunity got... <laughs> Tanked. Yeah, tight. You know, I'm joking, of course. <laughs> joking, of course, for everyone listening and yeah. watching. So, I kid. Uh, but anyways, I felt like Mississippi did not take it as seriously as others. So yeah. that's why I laugh. I joke. Yeah. But yeah, talking about the whole disconnect, though, man, that's just something that Christians, I don't think, are supposed to feel. Right. We're not supposed, we're supposed to be a family. Right. And it's hard to be a family over Zoom. Yeah. You know, it's hard to be a family just when we can't even see each other online. We're just watching the preacher. Yeah. We're just watching the song leader. And, you know, we did what we had to do. We, we you know, d- chose the best option right. from the limited options we had. But this was um, our worry. You yeah. know, the, the, I know the elders were thinking about this. The ministers were thinking about this. You were thinking about this, Eddie. You know? yeah. How do we keep people connected? Yeah when it's so easy to feel disconnected and and going taking that even a step further some people feel like their faith has been cut back their faith has been stunted yeah because and I, and i think that's true because so many of us we rely on worship services to feed us yeah to give us you know the the spiritual food that we need right and we cut that out for months mm-hmm. you know i mean sure there was the online portion yeah but Eddie, I know we lost people. Yeah, you know, I think every church church lost people because of this feeling of disconnect, this stunted growth in our faith. I mean, I I didn't struggle as much. I was still going to school for yeah. you know ministry for theology. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Rachel and I we still had our own Bible studies. So maybe, but I, I so maybe I didn't feel it as much. But I felt it a little bit. Yeah, I wasn't teaching. Yeah. You know, so in that way, I felt a little stunted as well. And so my question to you for today, for this first podcast, as people are coming back to worship, many for the first time, how do we regrow our faith? What steps can we take to jumpstart our faith, to regrow our faith when many of us have been feeling stunted in our faith? What do you think, Eddie? What do you think? Well, I think that uh, for us to grow, we kind of have to go back to what we did in the very beginning to grow our faith. What do you mean? All right. What I mean by that is spending time in the Word of God. Mm. You mentioned about going to class yourself, so you didn't really feel like that you, uh, you know, were didn't feel it as much. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, getting into the Word and praying. Yeah. And uh, using what we uh, applying what we have learned in the word to our lives and going yeah. out and serving others now that we're able to get out i think that's the only way that we will be able to grow our faith we've got to do that we've got to to uh, do those baby steps that will help us to grow our faith again yeah. and uh, if we don't do that i feel like that we will still continue to fade away in our faith people uh I don't know that that's, I think that's what uh, is the problem even before the pandemic. Mm-hmm. People just came to church. Yes. They came to worship. Yes. They didn't do anything else all week long that's in terms true. of Bible study or anything like that's that. That's true. And their faith wasn't that strong to begin with as a result of that. Yes. And so this was a challenge to everybody's faith to it make was. sure that, that we have the faith so that we can continue on. And yeah. some of those that were kind of weak to begin with have kind of dropped out as a result of that, I think. Yeah. 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 And that's, it's, it's been a struggle for a lot of people in, in, in his leadership. You know, we're wondering how do we reach out, back out to these people and get them back involved? Yeah, that's right. You know, and, and I think you're right, though, getting back, going back to the beginning. And then it reminds me of a plant. You know, when you when you right buy a rose bush, mm-hmm. you, you put it in the ground, and you you may you probably fertilize it a little bit. Yeah, you put a little fertilizer on there to jumpstart its growth to help right. it. Right. You know, because you're shocking it. You know, mm-hmm. and but you do the same thing in a year or two when you cut the rose bush back. Yeah. 
you, you, you cut it back, and then you fertilize it. Yeah. You, fer- you give it that almost, pretty much the same nutrients, yeah. or at least I do. Maybe, you know, I'm sure there's a few things you could do extra. It, but you give it the same nutrients to help jumpstart that growth again. Right. And so that's what I thought of when you were mentioning, you know, going back to the Bible and you know, jumpstarting your faith using Bible and using, uh, using your own personal devotionals and, and, and things like that. I think that's good. Mm-hmm. I think that's good. Yeah, I think it is too. Uh, I might mention this, you know, uh, Paul in Colossians, hmm. he, uh, he mentions about how to grow our faith. Uh, mm. Some of the people that I've read call it a Colossian cycle. Okay. And I think that that's a good thing to, to talk about. It's in Colossians chapter 1, verse 9 through 12. And uh, I, he mentions five steps. I, I think they're really interesting as you look at the passage mm-hmm. because he says he's praying for them. And what he prays about is that, number one, that they be filled with the, the knowledge of his will. And that's talking about uh, gaining knowledge of it. That's talking about reading yeah. the Word yeah. and uh, seeing what the Word is saying to us. And then he talks about uh, that th- this knowledge will help them then to have spiritual wisdom and understanding. Not only the wisdom to know what God's will is, but understanding is being able to make application of it to their life and in a real Oh, uh, yes. normal way, you know, mm-hmm. that they can grow as a result of that. And then so he, he says, uh, so, so that you can walk in a worthy manner of the Lord and please him in all aspects of, yes. of your life. Yes. So you're making application of it. You're walking the Christian path, making, uh, applying it to every aspect of your life, as he says here. And as a result, you, you're growing in your spirituality. And then I I like this part here where he says, bearing fruit in every good work. Mm -hmm. Uh, A lot of people don't really realize that that's part of growing your faith is to bear fruit as you do good works, as you serve other people, as you show people the the love that you have for them, Mm -hmm. that that they will grow as a result of bearing fruit like that. Mm -hmm. And then he says, as a result, your increase and your knowledge of God, strengthened with all power. Uh, he mentions also steadfastness and patience and joyously, you know, uh, gaining in this. And yeah. so that, that's the reason it called, it's called a cycle in mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. you get the knowledge and then you grow in your knowledge and uh, it just starts over again. Yeah. That knowledge causes you then to gain wisdom and understanding and you walk and you bear yeah. fruit. You increase in your knowledge as a result, and you just start yeah. over again. <laughs> I like I like that last part especially, yeah. because you know we, we do underestimate you know, the value of bearing good fruit, yeah, you know, bearing good works, yeah, and we think that's it. You know, it's just oh, okay, you know, it's just yeah. a product of what I'm doing. Yeah. But really, I like how you said that. That's how we. Uh, that helps us understand God even better and what He wants of us. And yeah. I think that's so true because we get the knowledge of His will, and we we start to grow. We start to bear this fruit, and sometimes I think it's only when we bear that fruit that we really understand right. what this is all about. Yeah, you know, it's only at the very, very end of a leadership camp that we had a couple of weeks ago here at Germantown. Yeah, that I start to realize, oh, you know, this is what happened this week, and I saw these kids grow. And yeah, I saw that you were one of the helpers in leadership camps. So yeah, that's yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> Glenn Daly asked, I said, sure, I'll help, you know. Yeah, and right, it, yeah, that's great. And it was overwhelming, and I, yeah. <laughs> it's it, a lot of work. It is a lot of work, I tell you. Yeah, they do But, you know, job. those kids find, you know, learn about yes. what it means to be a Christian and all, and yeah. I, I think that's wonderful. And I didn't see the value until the end. When I look yeah. back at how the, all these kids grew, have yeah. grown, yeah. and, you know, how they're going to come back next year, many of them, and yeah. continue to, you know. So then I really appreciated it once I yeah. saw that fruit and it made me want to go back to the beginning and do yeah. this all over again. Yeah, there you, you know. go. Well, a lot of people feel like that you have to be in an organization mm. or an organized work to bear fruit. Hmm. Okay. Uh, but I don't think that that's what it's talking about as much as, as you're walking. Yeah. You know, you take some bread to your neighbor. Yeah. Homemade bread to your neighbor. Okay. Uh, they have... Uh, People that 
in the community are needing someone to do something, and so you mm -hmm. help them out. You're one of the ones that volunteers to help them. Yeah. It, it's not an organized program as much as it's just that you're you're uh, available, yeah. that you are open, that you see the opportunities there to encourage <laughs> and influence people, and so you take yeah. that opportunity, and as a result, and it's just a part. It's a part of your daily life. Yeah. as you live your life, that you're doing those things, bearing the fruit. And I don't think a lot of people realize that, that, they, yeah. that that's where you can grow as a result. And then, too, see, you're getting reconnected because mm -hmm. you're, you know, you're bearing fruit yeah. with other people. So that's reconnecting yeah. right there. So, you know, we've, done, we've talked a lot about this. We've looked at Colossians 1, and I'm thinking, you know, may, is there a biblical character that we can look at? Because a lot of people learn really well from a story or looking at a biblical yeah. character, you know, their life and things like that. Yeah. Eddie, do you think as we talk about getting connected again and regrowing our faith, is there a biblical character that you can think of that works well with this? principle that we're talking about? Well, the one that I thought about uh, was uh, Paul being in prison. In Acts 28 and verse 20, it says mm -hmm. that he was in the Roman prison for two years. Mm. That's a long time. Oh, yeah. we, we've been, uh, what, a year and a half in the pandemic, you know? So. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. And when we were shut down for yeah. those yeah. Mo that month or however long it was, that yeah. was... I felt like I was in a prison. Yeah. Nowhere always, to go. Yeah, that's exactly right. Oh, it well, terrible. it has been a prison, you know. Yeah, yeah. And for I, many. And, uh, that's exactly right, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Many of our own members, you know, they still are, yes. are confined to the house, and uh, they don't get out hardly any at all. Yeah. They do go get groceries or something like that. But, sure. uh, man, that's, that's really uh, – you can really get depressed doing that, just staying there in the house all the time. Yeah. And I think Paul went through that. I, I don't. Most of the time, we don't really think about him being restricted, but he was. Yeah. Who, who did he come in contact with? The guards. Mm -hmm. He came in contact with Onesimus. Yeah. We know that much because he converted him, you know. He wrote letters. Mm -hmm. uh, he was able to help uh, actually convert some of the guards that were guarding him. That know? is amazing yeah, to think about. <laughs> yeah, these really rough and tough guys. Yeah, yeah. Guarding prisoners. Yeah, had six-hour shifts, and so yeah. at least four of them in a day, you know, that he could teach. And, yeah. and evidently they heard him teaching. Yeah. But uh, what I'm thinking about is what was Paul doing while he was in prison? Mm -hmm. Say, Yeah, he was he, confined. Yeah. What was he doing while he was confined? Yeah. That's right. He's mm -hmm. praying. He's praying. He's studying the Word of God. Oh, yes. You know, and he's writing people about it, talking to people about it. He's teaching. Yeah. His his face didn't die in prison. It yeah. actually probably grew in prison. And I, I think the same thing. But, uh, he was having physical contact with people. Yes. With the guards. Yes. And uh, them allowing... Luke or some of the guys to come in and, and yeah. write for him, you know. And, and I'm sure the church stuff. took care of him. Yeah, 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 they did. There were people there at the church. Mm -hmm. That's where he met uh, Ananias and Sapphira, I think. And, uh, not Ananias and Sapphira, but Aquila and, and Priscilla, Priscilla, right? Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, it uh, uh, maybe he met them before that, but anyway, they were there as well. So mm -hmm. it, uh, yeah. I'm sure that there were... Well, in Acts there, it mentions, and in Romans, it mentions a lot of the people that he knew there. So yeah. it was a beautiful relationship that he had with the people. And that's a great example of just, you know, many of us have been feeling like disconnected. And Paul yeah. very much could have felt disconnected. Yeah. And it may, he might have felt a little bit. Yeah. But man, you're right. He kept himself busy yeah. in the Word. Yeah. In the Word and with other people, you mm -hmm. know, and we still had ways to connect with other people, even yeah. in the middle of this pandemic. We right. still did. Yeah. I think, so that's a great point. And even now as we're coming out, now's our chance yeah. to get back into this, you know, talking and, and you know, interacting with people. Right. But also interacting with the Word and continuing on with our spiritual matters. As you said from the very beginning, go back to the basics. Yeah. You know, let's get that fertilizer out. You know, <laughs> things like that. 
Yeah, that, that's a good illustration about fertilizing. Yeah. Because when you cut that rose bush back mm -hmm. uh, in the spring, what is it? All the new vegetation coming out. Yeah. Where the old was, you know, now all the new yeah. parts sprouting out, you know. And that's where the blooms come from. Right. Because a, a lot of the ways we used to do ministry yeah. and worship were cut back. That's right. You know, so we had to think of new ways. We had to find new blo blooms, you yeah, know, had to blossom right. in new ways. Yeah. So that has been an adventure. Now, I'm kind of a positive person myself in yeah. that uh, I see uh, the things that this pandemic has caused the church to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. One of them is like this podcast that we're doing yes. right now. That's, that was the direct result. S yeah. Streaming the service. Yes. All right. There are people that had never would come to the church building, mm -hmm. but they watched it on TV. Yeah, and sometimes uh, the lesson pointed to them, and they yeah. said, "Well, let's go and visit that church now that we can." We've had all. visitors do just that. Yeah, in place membership. Yeah, they watched first, and then they said, "You know, we yeah. want to be at this place." Yeah, that's right. And so, uh, uh, you know, he, he, uh, you, you mentioned a little while ago about. There's about 100 people that continue to watch it on the streaming. Yeah, as of right now. Yeah, yeah. right. Well, uh, I don't think that we should ever stop streaming the yes, service. I agree. Because this is something that reaches out to people. Yeah. And uh, think about it. We probably would have never done that if it hadn't been for the pandemic. Yeah, we wouldn't have tried this hard to, to That's right. work on it. That's exactly right, or put yeah. the money into it. Yeah. And it's not only Germantown, but it's a lot of churches. Yeah. And down in Mississippi, where I do mission work, a lot of them are doing podcasts and, <laughs> yeah, <that's great. laughs> and, and live streaming their services uh -huh. and all these things. And uh, I, I just uh, laugh about it, you know, that, man, the Lord uh, is using this pandemic Yes. I, I don't think he brought it on us, but I, I think uh, he's using it to cause us to wake up. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we may we may see a revival in terms of conversions and reaching people that we hadn't reached in a long time because yeah. of the pandemic. Yeah. Wouldn't that be something? That's true. I mean, and, and Dave has talked about it. I, uh -huh. I've seen it. Yeah. Or people outside the church have said, did God cause this? You know, they're asking questions. Yeah trying to figure out how this all makes sense, how this all fits into the world. Uh -huh. And, yeah, so I, you might be right. Uh -huh. that, wouldn't that be exciting? <laughs> oh, yeah. Wouldn't that be great? It would be, I should tell you. That's right. Did you want to talk about John exiled at Patmos? Uh, we have hit 24 minutes, so we're doing good on time. So okay. we've got more time if you want to use it, because I'm going to cut out a few things. So. Okay. Do you want to? I can. I, well, I feel like we kind of we, we're we're making it towards the end, actually. Yeah. You want to just close it down? I think we could close it down. Okay, that'd be fine. Unless you have something in, like a good point that you think would be very valuable. No. no. With John exiled at Patmos. No, I, okay. that's fine. Yeah. I feel like we're we've kind of. Yeah. Going down on the other side. Yeah, which is fine. <laughs> not a big deal. Yeah. Hopefully you won't have to cut out too much. No, no, no. Just the middle and the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the middle and the beginning. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's about it, you know. No, I wrote down some things I need to fix for yeah. the next one, but this has gone really well. So. Okay. okay. Well, let's land the plane. Okay. Um, let me think here how we're going to do this. So, Eddie, I think we've said a lot of good things today, and I really appreciate you talking to us about, you know, the sense of disconnecting, uh, disconnection, the sense of stunted faith, and how we can get back to it. So if you could do me a favor, and could you just summarize the points? What's our takeaway? Just give us two or three things that we can take home with us. So one, two, three, here's what you can do if you're feeling disconnected or stunted. Well, I would uh, say that we need to uh, take the, the steps that we've always taken to grow our faith. And remember that it's talking about prayer to God, connecting with Him. Yes. And then letting Him talk to us through the Word, yes. teach us through the Word. 
and not just read it as much as meditate upon it and help it to grow our faith. That if we'll do that, then our faith will grow. But not only do we study and pray, but we need to reach out to other people, uh, look at the opportunities that we have to reach out and not only serve, but just to connect with someone and talk with someone. Those friends are still there, but there are new friends that we can reach out to and see that opportunity of reaching out to people. And I, I feel like that we will grow in our connection and get our faith back if we'll do those things. Okay. Well, thank you, Eddie. I really appreciate you being on this podcast. I look forward to the next five episodes mm-hmm. that we're going to be publishing. I hope you all who are listening will tune in these next few weeks as we continue to publish these. We're going to try to do this on a bi-monthly basis or twice a month and try to publish these. And we hope that you can listen to these while you're on your way to work, while you're at work, jogging, running, whatever you may be doing, climbing Mount Everest, whatever you may be doing. We hope that these are helpful and that you'll keep tuning in. Thank you.